Hey guys, Thermal Master back here with another video for you today. Today we're going to be looking at and doing an experiment on this iMac G3. This is a Revision D model. This has the 333 megahertz PowerPC G3 CPU. So I'm thinking about trying to track down an upgrade. G3 333. I've got 384 megs installed because I couldn't find another 256 megabyte module in enough time for this video. But the subject of this video the Revision A, like the Bondi Blue original IMAX, were all 230, or sorry, they're 233 megahertz, but they have a 2 megabyte video memory buffer. And they have a spot that you can upgrade them to 6 megabytes by adding a 4 meg module. The later IMAX, the I think Rev B onwards, uh, B, C, and D, including this one, all have the 4 megabyte module pre populated. So you have a total of 6 megabytes of video memory. Now, this controller is an ATI Rage Pro Turbo something. It's a PCI video chipset from the PC era of this time. It's actually not a very good one either, but it's a video chipset that was commonly sold with eight megabytes, or at least optional eight megabytes on most PCI cards. And of course, being the same chip, I know it's not got the same BIOS because it is an iMac and you know running different software and all that. And of course, it's built onto the main board of this. You can't change it or anything, but that socket is still there and it's got two megs on board, and I know it will address up to eight megabytes. So I managed to track down this for about 20 bucks on eBay. There's a gentleman selling, I think he's got like a case or two of these, but these are eight megabyte SG RAM DIMMs, or memory modules, I don't know what you'd call these. These are SG RAM modules, is out. whatever, something like that. But these are eight megabytes or something like that to bring some cards up to 16 or you know, uh, I think 12 might have been an option, but I think six eight bringing 8 to 16 was mostly the option Now I'm pretty sure that we're not going to get 10 megs out of this and there's no reason to have 8 in this machine I mean there's You're using a built-in display and at 6 megabytes you can use the built-in display at its full capability But I just wanted to see I thought it would be fun if we could swap out this module and See if it works if it even boots with it and then past that, does it actually recognize the 8 megabytes or does it still say 6, you know? And I figured that that was worth a shot and my air conditioner came on back there, so sorry about the noise in the background. But I just wanted to show you pre prior to the installation what our setup looked like here. Just running OS 9.22. I've got USB overdrive installed so that I can use my cursor, or sorry, scroll wheel better. And... This is my, pretty pretty much the only Mac that I use anymore. Um, I've got a Mac Pro and all this. I just I don't find it you, as as entertaining as this is. Um, thinking about maybe bumping this to a max of 512 megs someday. Thinking about putting an SSD in it someday. Maybe a DVD drive. Maybe one day I will bump this all the way up if I can find one of those Sonnet um, upgrade cards for cheap enough that you know it won't bankrupt me immediately. I might actually. You know upgrade this with that but good luck you know so what we're gonna do first obviously and shut the machine down and these actually shut down pretty quick and then obviously you know unplug everything this is on the network mind you move that out of the way unplug that that's actually very warm that's concerning make sure it's not got any extra charge move this out of the way so we don't accidentally mess it up and then I'm going to need two hands for this, so I'm going to cut here. So the machine is now on its face on a, in this case, a pillowcase. But anything like cloth will work. As long as you're not going to scratch that CRT or the front panel, it doesn't matter. If you've never taken one of these apart before, uh, pretty much you've got one screw here and a handle. You yank on the handle after pulling the screw out. This whole panel comes up. There's two more screws behind that that I'll show you later. That lets you, you know, after you unplug everything, the cartridge just slides on out, and that's the whole system module out. I'll get back to you after I get this back cover off. Oh, and in case you were wondering, this is a captive screw. It's pretty hard to lose. So I'll pull the cover off, set it aside somewhere safe that you won't forget about it. Uh, sometimes there's a little bracket that goes across here that you can unscrew. Sometimes they're zip tied. Sometimes they have nothing like this machine. Uh, these are Phillips screws, though sometimes. Um, in this case, not, but sometimes they're loose enough you can do it by hand. Now, these two screws at the top, these 
are awful. They suck to put in, they suck to take out, they like to fall into everything and then disappear, they like to strip out, they're hard to put in because you have to hold it in a certain position, they're hard to take out because you have to grab them before they fall. Annoying, be careful of those. So this is your big old power connector, this is your front panel and audio connector, and then this is the video connector. I believe that this is actually just standard Apple DB15 video, and that you can plug in an external monitor to here if you really want to for some reason, but this is probably better CRT wise than any Apple DB15 monitor that was really ever common. I don't think it's better than any that were ever made, but I, I'm sure it's better than you know the regular like Apple 14 inch 512 by 384 monitors that you find were common. This big chunk of plastic up here is a handle. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, if you have the infrared port on your uh, on you know, a Bondi Blue, you get to unplug that too. That's where that'll be. And I do believe that it is a regular serial port, even though it says not a serial port, but who knows, I couldn't tell you. So handle up here, pull it up, heavy. Pull it up. And there you go. That's the whole system out. This is the memory module that we're getting at here. So there's our little RAM module, little VRAM module. There's a two megabytes on the board, ATI Rage Pro Turbo PCI, and oops, it's upside down. All the electrons are gonna fall out. This is a brand new battery. Actually, my local Batteries Plus had this battery in stock. Um, interesting about that. Let's see here. You know, there's your Crystal Audio PCI setup for audio. I believe that's the network controller. This cage here is where the CPU lives. Yes, this pathetic little heat sink is all it gets, of course, with the help of this fan right above it, which maybe I'll replace that someday for a cooler or quieter fan, more likely. There's 128 mags here. Normally, there's a smaller module underneath here. You pull this bracket off and you lift it up with a screwdriver. This whole thing pops up. Be very careful with that. These pins are... There's a lot of them, and they like to break and bend very easily. Don't do that. Um, but usually the module on the bottom is 32 or 64 megs. So, you know, change that one first. <laughs> you, know, you can always add more on top later. It's much easier. Here's your audio cable. This is your optical drive cable. This one is for your hard drive. This one is front panel controls, I believe. And then there is power for the hard disk. Under here somewhere is the modem connector which is actually just a regular serial port as far as I'm aware. Just there are very few breakouts for it. If someone has one that they're willing to sell, let me know. I would love to have a serial port instead of a modem. Uh, let's see here. What else? There's also, you know, big power connector underneath here. These are spring loaded. You got to push them back and lift up to take them out. There's a spring you should hook it onto that's on top of the hard drive. I didn't realize that my first time around. And then obviously the hard drive underneath there. They're a huge pain to get out. So, let's go unbox the module. And I'll do that off camera, because it's just a cardboard box. I'll let you know if I find anything interesting in there, of course. But, just to get it ready for this. And I guess it was slightly interesting. I wonder what this second spot would have been for. Maybe it's a different type of module that they were selling. That happens to use the same insert. But it did actually come with instructions. Uh, obviously, this is compact branded, but that shouldn't matter. So demo upgrade, limited warranty, quality. These are all probably boring and useless. So let's snap this module in, why don't we? It just goes in like any other regular SODIM. Snap it in there and then push it down until it clicks. And that's it. Now, something of interest, these are not the same numbers. So we definitely have different chips, you know, they're made by the same people, just they have different numbers on them. It may be hard to read in here, but, you know, these are obviously, they're both 32-bit, so it should work, at least it should have boot with it. But this is apparently a different size. I'd have to look up and see what this one was. But this one does come out as having four 2-megabit chip or 2-megabyte chips, which is four 16-megabit chips. So I'll have to look up and see what this one is and see if this is probably a four. It's probably smaller. So I guess now we gotta slap it all back together. Insulation is a reverse of removal. I won't bore you with that. So let's find out here. 
All right, I actually didn't bother putting it all the way back together. I just made sure everything was plugged in. You know, uh, it's actually kind of hard to see from this angle, but the bottom plate isn't on it, and I didn't plug the network in or anything. We're just gonna hit the power button and see what she does now. Regular Macintosh bong, that's a good start. Her disc spun up. The Gauss and the monitor just came up. Do we get garbage video or regular video? Regular video, so far. This machine actually takes a long time to boot up because I have a lot of extensions, so I will come back when that's done. All right, we're at a desktop, and now for the moment of truth. System profiler, will we see six megabytes or more? Nope, just six. Well, that's, you know, annoying. Uh, and of course, Double Talk is annoyed because it's not on the network. Well, that doesn't surprise me very much. I kind of didn't figure that it was gonna do anything, but you know, I think it was $19 plus shipping. I figured that, eh, it's worth a shot. Yep, VRAM size, six megabytes. Oh, well, it's worth a shot. At least it was was to me. Hopefully this gives you guys some information. Someone out there finds this helpful, um, or at least informative in some way, or entertaining, or something like that. But we're going to go ahead and shut it down. And I'm probably going to pull that module back out and probably put it on the shelf until I need it at a different date. Come on, shut down you. Uh, shut down, could not close shut, or could not shut down because it's not finished shutting down. Oh, what a shocker. Come on, you. There it goes. Well, that was a fun experiment. Maybe next time I'll, you know, do an interesting video of touching this thing up a little bit more. Or, uh, you know, like a full recap of pay, a PAV board. I actually have a machine identical to this that's in much worse shape. I Maybe I'll do a some type of rebuild or cleaning of that machine. And uh, we'll see where that takes us. I would have loved if this actually worked, you know, but maybe I'll have to go get like a G3 or a G4 upgrade card at some point and then we can see what whizzy things we can do with this at uh, at 500 megahertz instead of 300, you know. Ooh. Well, anyways, thank you very much for watching and have a good night.